Rain. Every living being on earth benefits from it, unless you're the wicked witch of the West. However, too much of a good thing can always be a bad thing, even with water. As seen in, in the 1999 Venezuela flooding and the brief flow event. Did you know that for every cubic meter of water is equal to one ton of weight? This leads me into the total three day rainfall, which occurred on the coast of Venezuela at the International Airport. In the time span of 52 hours, starting on December 14th and ending on the 16th in 1945, totaling 911 millimeters. This phenomenon was caused by interaction of a cold front with moist southwesterly flow from the Pacific Ocean towards the Caribbean Sea, which resulted in an unusually wet period over the coast of Venezuela. When looking at the flood history, it can be noted that floods were highly anomalous and rare for the area. Usually floods in the region coincide with the rainy season, which is between May and October. In fact, the probability of a flood like that even happening is one in a 1,000 year event. The region most affected by the floods were the north central coastal areas of Venezuela. With flooding not occurring often, the country is not equipped with the proper tools in order to protect infrastructures as well as the lives of the people within the community. Imagine a disaster such as this one coming and destroying your town or your city. Most of us wouldn't even know what to do or think, let alone know how to recover from a disaster such as this one. With the effect of climate change on meteorological events still being heavily evaluated and researched, there is not enough evidence to correlate a warming world with higher frequencies of flood, given how warmer air can hold more water vapor, which in return ups the chances of heavier rainfall. Some potential anthropathic factors could be deforestation, which helps decrease the amount of friction and water absorption. Here's a miniature simulation of how deforestation can affect the environment. As you can see, the water begins to flood the land, which makes the soil become unstable. This causes the land to shift, which in turn causes a mudslide. Once the land begins to slide, so do buildings, such as the blue house shown in the simulation. Imagine more than 8,000 individual residences and 700 apartment buildings being destroyed or damaged in your city. This was the tragic reality for those in Vargas. Early estimates suggested 50,000 people reported to be missing. And of that, 1,000 people recovered from the ocean and 5,000 recovered on land. Of those remaining bodies, officials believe they were lost at sea when the flooding occurred. Roads, electricity, telephone, water, and sewage systems were disrupted. Total damage in Vargas was estimated to be 1.9 billion. Here's the mitigation and adaption model simulation. Starting with the debris flow of mitigation measures, it branches off into two sections, structural measures and non-structural measures. Some of the structural measures were channel works, conditioning of buildings, erosion control, and also, st and also stabili stabilization of works and streams. For non-structural measures, some of the uh, things were hazard and risk maps, land use regu regulations, early warning systems, uh, preparedness and also in structural empowerment. So, as you can see on figure five and six, um, some of the um, constructions of dams and channels to trap sediment and conduct the overflows to the sea, with there being different structural designs for the dams on figure five and six, as I said earlier, and also for the canals too on figure seven at the bottom right. So in summary, the great 1999 Venezuela flood event impacted and changed the course of history forever for the, for the civilians that it unfortunately affected. And here are our resources and our video gift that we got. That is all.